Hello everyone and welcome to one of the very last tracks of this conference. I hope you have still a little bit of energy left for the very last 30 to 45 minutes. I have today the pleasure to talk about supply chain management at Telefresh and how we have managed to improve our supply chain by making more and better data-driven decisions through applying Data mesh. So first, a few words, words about myself. So I'm Sharif. I am the engineering manager of supply chain management analytics team at HelloFresh. I've been with HelloFresh for three years right now. I was born and grew up in Berlin. So also pretty happy that I have the opportunity to work for a Berlin company. I started my tech career around 11 years ago as a back-end engineer, mainly focusing on building you know, back-ends and microservices. But I've been always very passionate about data, and that is why I switched to data engineering around seven years ago. So let me give you also a brief overview about HelloFresh and the product that we provide. I guess most of you are already familiar with HelloFresh and the product, but let me still give you a brief overview. So we are a meal kit delivery service. We provide households with fresh homemade meals. Our customers subscribe to a plan and once a week they get a box with a number of meals with pre-portioned ingredients. And the idea around that is to take out all the hassle. So our customers just in forehand choose a number of recipes and meals for a particular week and the rest is taken care of by HelloFresh. So we do the planning, the sourcing, the manufacturing and shipping the box then right to the doorstep, doorstep of our customers. And by the time, we also expanded our portfolio as we also offer ready-to-eat food. So our mission is to change the way people eat forever by being a fully integrated food solution. Let me give you also some numbers. So for example, in 2022, we managed to deliver over 1 billion meals to our customers. And as of today, we operate in 18 different countries. All right, then let's talk about HelloFresh supply chain. So that is a high level representation of HelloFresh supply chain in comparison to that of a grocer. And as you can see, HelloFresh supply chain is shorter. So our supply chain consists of fewer steps. So we have just three main steps and that is sourcing our ingredients from our suppliers, mainly domestic suppliers, doing the processing and the packaging, and then shipping the box to our customers. We have also a so-called pull-based supply chain, meaning we just order from our supply chain what we really need based on demand forecast, based on predicted custom orders. And as you can imagine, such a shorter pool-based supply chain gives us financially a big advantage, but it also creates a more sustainable supply chain overall. So let's start to talk about potential supply chain problems. Okay, so the supply chain of every manufacturing company is, is very critical and it's very important to avoid any issues in the supply chain. So what are potential problems that could occur in a supply chain and that needs to be avoided? An access of goods is such an example. So imagine that you ordered too much and have potentially too many leftovers. That is especially problematic when you deal with ingredients and food. So goods that may mold. That's the opposite of that is a shortage of goods, right? So that makes it more challenging to fulfill your customer orders or lack of transparency. It's super important to be transparent throughout your whole supply chain. So on you know, topics as costs or waste, how do we perform in terms of costs and waste? And what drives my costs and my waste, right? Same for the throughput. 
So what are my potential bottlenecks in my supply chain that I need to get rid of? To avoid all of these problems, it's super important to have a data-driven supply chain and to really leverage the full potential of data. Okay, then let's have a look at our data landscape at HelloFresh before we introduced Data Mesh. So before we had Data Mesh in place, we used to have one central data and analytics team. And that central analytics team was responsible for basically every data-driven business decision in the company. The team was made up of a lot of hyper-specialized people but they were lacking business knowledge that are responsible to answer specific analytical questions, but they were also at the same time, at the same time responsible for making several data assets across different domains available in the data warehouse, such as marketing data, supply chain data, finance data, and so on. And as you can imagine, that team became quite quickly a bottleneck for the company, right? So that approach is not scalable. And that is what we especially realized when COVID hit. So during COVID, our business grew significantly, but we were not able to keep up with that from data side, right? Although, especially during that time, it was super important for us to be data-driven. A lot of questions and new questions popped up during the supply chain, such as, should we order a certain ingredient rather from supplier A or supplier B? Or how many orders do we expect for a particular week? And many more, right? And it was super important to answer these questions in a very accurate way and in a timely manner. And the prerequisite for that is to create high quality data assets at high pace. So we could not afford anymore to take months until certain data assets are available in the data warehouse or to constantly troubleshoot certain data quality issues in the data. So we needed a change, and that's when Data Mesh came into picture. So what is Data Mesh? Data Mesh is a decentralized organizational architectural approach to manage analytical data at scale. And the emphasis and the focus is here really on the organizational part, as we will see in a bit. The term was coined by Jean-Marc Degani in 2019 and consists of four main principles. The first principle is domain ownership. So we move away from that centralized approach, from that central bottleneck team to, ownership, to a decentralized ownership to business domain. So we start to compose our data and our teams around the business units of the company so that we have at the end domain teams taking full ownership of the data and the end-to-end -end solution. Next is data as a product. So we put product thinking into our data, right? We treat data as a product and we share data as a product. And that ultimately also means that I need to be very close to my data consumers. I need to understand their needs and I need to try to fulfill their needs. And in that sense, we also start to talk about a data product instead of a data asset. Self-serve data platform. A data platform is provided to empower the domain teams to create data assets or data products um, and do the analytical work. And that helps on the teams to you know, build, maintain, share data products without focusing too much or worrying too much about the underlying infrastructure. And lastly, federated data governance, a data governance model based on federal decision-making with representatives of the different domains in that team. And they are mainly working or focusing on defining policies around the topic mostly of PIA. So for example, what is considered as PII and how to handle PIA data in my company. So that was basically data mesh in a nutshell, right? If you want to learn more about that, I would also recommend you to read Jamak's book that was released uh, last year to get a really deeper, um, uh, stronger deep dive into, you know, data mesh with also some use cases. All right, so let's see how we apply that at HelloFresh and organizational level. So we have a data governance team, as I just mentioned, mainly responsible for, you know, defining and creating policies around the topic of PII and security. The team is also responsible for maintaining the data catalog and defining and governing a data certification process 
to really make sure that data products are properly described in our data, in our data catalog. Then we have the data solutions team responsible for defining a target architecture, naming conventions, standardizations and best practices, as for example, naming conventions for our data products or S3 buckets. Then we have the data platform team, right, responsible to create the tools that, that empowers and supports the main team at the end to create the data products and the analytics. You know, um, tools like data ingestion tool as an example, orchestration tool, or just a tool to run data quality checks on top of my data products. And then at the end, we have the different domain teams like supply chain team, finance team, marketing team, and so on. So these are then the domain teams that at the end create the data products and do the analytics. And they're also using then basically everything what happens around them, right? Like the policies from the data governance team that they need to fulfill, um, the standardizations from the data solutions team, and the tools from the data platform team. And that is the team that I'm part of, supply chain management, and that's the team that I would like to talk next. All right. So SCM Analytics, supply chain management analytics, is a team made up of several roles. So let's start to talk about the data product manager. The data product manager is responsible to manage our data product. He's or she's the one to put product thinking into our data products and to be very close to our consumers to really understand what the requirements are. So what are their usage, usage patterns? What are their use cases? And to regularly also check how happy they are actually with our data products. Then we have the data engineers responsible to create the data products, also the corresponding data pipelines for that. They are also responsible to maintain our own infrastructure. I will talk about that in a bit and in general to everything what is basically related you know to engineering so as for example also making sure that the proper ci cd pipeline is created you know across the whole team like for analytics engineers or in general to make sure that engineering best practices are followed throughout the whole team then we have the analytics engineers there is there is some intersections with the data engineers as they also create data products, but analytics engineers are usually closer to the business and work more on certain aggregation on top of the data products. And they are also responsible to uh, put a proper data modeling on the data. Next, our business intelligence analysts, responsible for descriptive analytics and to find certain usage pattern or certain patterns in the data. They are also creating dashboards and visualizations on top of our data products. Then next, our data scientist, you know, responsible for predictive analytics and the creation of machine learning models. In our domain, the data scientists are working mainly on the topic, on everything basically around the topic of demand forecasts. And then at the end, the operations researchers working on solving optimization problems that arise along the supply chain and tackling them with the mathematical methods. So there is quite a lot of exchange already between the different roles, but our team is also very close to the different business departments. So we're working very closely with the different business, uh, business departments to really make sure that we tackle also the right problems through analytics. <clears throat> All right, so before I start to talk about our data product creation process, I would like to talk in more detail about the essence of a data product. So when we talk about a data product, we mean something like a certain unit of data, a certain data representation. So something like a table, for example, or a view or machine learning model. A data product consists of several components, like for example, the code that executes the logic or the underlying infrastructure. But two very important components are the input and the output port that I would like to talk about right now. So every data product has an input port that is basically the upstream component that feeds my data product with data. For example, an operational system that provides its data through its interfaces, like an API or a messaging system like Kafka. But the input port of a data product can also be just another data product that provides its data through its output ports. And the output 
support is there to basically consume the data of the data product. Quite often that is SQL, but that can also be an API, a file, a messaging system like Kafka, for example. And since the data product or the input of a data product can be again another data product, we can really create these chains of interconnected data product, what then at the end basically represents the mesh. All right, so at HelloFresh, we have several domain teams that create data products from the data of operational systems of their corresponding domain. A certain transformation is applied here, but the data is yet not further aggregated or enriched. So these or this type of data product is also called source-aligned data product, since the data is still pretty close to the data of the source system on the operational system. <clears throat> And down the line, the data gets further more aggregated and enriched with other data products. That could be data products of my own team, but also quite often we're talking about data products from other teams. Right? And this type of data product is called aggregated data product. And that is also quite often the part where analytics engineering comes into picture, where the data is modeled and where certain aggregations are created. You also see a slight difference here when you look closely between domain A and domain B. And that is that at domain B, the operational systems are located in between the team. Whereas for domain A, the operational system is located outside the team. So domain B is a team that is doing analytics, but at the same time is also owning the corresponding operational systems. While domain A is a pure analytical team. Most of the teams at HelloFresh and also my team is a domain A type team. So we are just purely doing analytics, but we are still pretty close to the teams that are owning the operational systems and we have also the corresponding business knowledge. And then we have kind of a third type of team and these are teams that are not creating any data products from operational systems. They are not very close to you know, operational teams, but they just create data products out of other data products that are, use it, that are then being used as, as an input, as an input port. And that could be, or that, that could be aggregated data products, but also source aligned data products. All right. So before we can start with a data product creation process, we need an underlying infrastructure. And for that, our self-serve data platform provides the ability to easily create an own infrastructure, such as a Kafka Connect ingestion cluster, or an airflow orchestration cluster, or, or a computi computation cluster as Spark EMR or Snowflake Warehouse, or a cluster a query engine to access my data, like again a Snowflake Warehouse or a Presto cluster. And in addition to that, they provide also monitoring and cost transparency capabilities. At the end, it's also quite often up to the teams. If they want to create and maintain their own cluster, or if they just use a shared cluster provided by the data platform team. There is, for example, a shared Airflow cluster that can be used to run and deploy DAX. But most teams seeking for more autonomy, as my teams, are creating their own clusters and also maintaining them. Okay, so right now we have our clusters in the domain, like a Kafka Connect cluster, an Airflow cluster, we have different various source systems, like a database system, a messaging system, like Kafka, Rabbit, Files, APIs. We have our self-serve data platform with several tools that can be used in order to create my data product. So let's start the data product creation process. Okay, so the first step is always ingesting the data from various sources, sources into S3. And for that, also the data platform team provides several tools that can be used to support the process. An example for that is that they provide a tool that supports the team to handle PII data in Kafka. With that tool, it's very easy to anonymize or delete specific PII fields in my Kafka events before they get written into S3. And thus to make sure or support the team to fulfill and follow the policies of the data governance team. 
Okay, so next we have tools for data transformation and cleaning, as for example, filtering out faulty data or running a deduplication logic. For that, also tooling is provided as a configure based low code ETL framework. But as you can see, what is also interesting here is that there is also a line coming from the domain team. So it happens also from time to time that domain teams come also up with their own tools to accelerate their processes as, as happening here. Next, data quality checks. It's, it's very important that we really make sure that our data is valid and consistent before we expose the data to our consumers and then we end up with the first data product, the first source aligned data product. But as I mentioned, down the line, the data needs to get more aggregated and enriched. So for that, again, a tooling is provided. We want data quality checks, and then we have our aggregated data products that form the basis for various visualizations and dashboards. Sometimes it also happens that the visualizations are already happening on top of the source aligned data product, but quite often a further aggregation is needed for that. So that is a high level approach. And with that approach, we have been really able to accelerate our data product creation process significantly. And the data platform team is right now even working on a solution to unify all of these steps. So we have at the end just one configuration file. And based on that configuration file, everything is, is, is then executed, like from, from data ingestion to the aggregation or to the creation of the aggregated data products. OK, so that is a high level overview. I would like, I would like to showcase right now with two examples, how we've been really able to improve our supply chain based on that. So the first topic I would like to talk about is transparency around the topic of food waste. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's super important to be transparent throughout the whole supply chain, to understand basically what happens in my supply chain, okay? And it's for us also at HelloFresh very important to keep our food waste very low. So what is meant by food waste? So food waste is the amount of ingredients that get inbounded at our HelloFresh warehouses but are never packed and shipped to our, to, to our customers. So basically all the ingredients that never make it to our customers. And the reason behind that could be that they don't pass the quality checks. Another reason is that we order too much and have therefore too many leftovers. So at our warehouses, where the boxes are getting produced, we generate a lot of data automatically through our system. So for example, when we receive new pallets of ingredients, that is generating data. Or where the, when the pallets or the ingredients are moved to the different areas of our warehouses, as for example, um, the storage area or the production area or the outbound area. So all of that is generating data. And in that way, we are also able to tr track exactly the ingredients that don't make it to our customers at the end. So all that data is published to Apache Kafka. And from there on, we create various data products. So first, again, we ingest the data into S3 via Kafka Connect. Then we transform and clean the data via Apache Spark. And that is a two-step approach. So we first apply the, I would say, the easy transformation or the transformation that are common in various different uh, pipelines. So for example, yeah, flattening a certain column or exploding a certain column. But quite often also the data needs to be transformed further furthermore with more specific transformation or more complex transformation. Needed or not, we end up with our first source aligned data products that are accessible through SQL and various query engines like Photon, Presto, Snowflake, and so on. And that data is already being used, for example, to train certain machine learning models. Or it's also being used for ad hoc analysis. So business, intellig business intelligence analysts are using that, for example, to check ad hoc um, and, and try to check if there are certain patterns in the data for inventory analysis, for example. 
Then the data gets transformed, aggregated and enriched furthermore. And also a modeling is applied, so enriched with furthermore data products so that we end up with our aggregated data products that forms the basis now for further visualizations, right? As for example, at the top, we have a dashboard that shows the, the evolution of our food waste in our various warehouse to really understand Do we make improvements or not? Is the food waste increasing or decreasing? When do we need to act? And what could be potentially the reasons that in a certain week, in a certain warehouse, we have a very high food waste? Another dashboard at the bottom shows the total amount of food waste in our warehouses in the different ratios of um, returned leftovers, disposed and donated one. So when we have leftovers, there are basically three ways to, to manage that, right? So we either donate them or we return them. And if both of that is not possible, we need to dispose them. And obviously, the lower the disposal ratio, the better. So we have also various more dashboards, right? But all of these dashboards are providing us a really good transparency around the whole topic of food waste and helping us also to keep the food waste very low. And we have also various other examples. So same for costs, throughput, carbon emission. So overall, with this approach, we have managed to bring much more transparency in our supply chain. All right, so the second use case I would like to talk about is demand forecast. So I can't emphasize enough actually how important it is for a manufacturing company to properly forecast the demand. So we apply data science to predict the numbers of orders as accurately as possible weeks in advance. And for that, we train machine learning models with data product, historical data of data products, mainly um, subscription data, orders data, but many more. And by the way, for training machine learning models, we are mainly using source-aligned data products because the reason is we are really interested in the source data, so the real facts without any aggregation. So we train the machine learning model, we end up with a trained machine learning model, and then we have our forecast numbers. And, that, and these forecast numbers are at the end actually also just only another data product. So basically a table that is accessible through S SQL. And in addition to SQL, what is uh, interesting here, we have here an addition out output port and that is API. And the reason behind that is that these forecasts needs to be fed back to operational systems such as our procurement system in order to order our ingredients from our suppliers. And in addition to fetching the forecast numbers, the numbers are in addition to that combined with further algorithmic estimation to provide further breakdowns and granularities, as for example, on the recipe level. So that is a high level approach. But what is also very important is that we constantly compare our forecast numbers with our real numbers. So once the real orders are coming in, it is very important to check how accurate we have actually been over the past weeks. And on top of that, we also create accuracy dashboards to really understand if we're making basically a good job or not. And that we potentially also need to loop back or change our, our machine learning model solution in case that our accuracy is not that good. So that is high level how our demand forecast process works. And, I, and, and over, the last, over the last years, we have been really able to improve our accuracy significantly. So right now we're talking about an accuracy about round about 98%, what is, what is really strong and good. Okay, so these are the two use cases. So what are the conclusions? So over the last years, we've been really able to improve our supply chain at HelloFresh significantly through analytics. And the big portion of that is really dedicated to data mesh mainly because it puts us into a position where a team of hyper-specialized people like 
data engineers, operations researcher, data scientists that also at the same time understand the business inside and out, work together to solve business-related problems through analytics. While at the same time, they're able to offload a lot of the work to the data platform or the central team that supports the team with tools and an underlying infrastructure. So alone in the supply chain field, for example, we have been able to create 100 plus high quality data products per year. We significantly improve the transparency and we make much more data driven decisions and have a much stronger efficiency throughout our supply chain, mainly through our algorithmic solution of data science and operations research so that we at the end end up with happier customers and empl employees. So that's it from my side. I hope you could get an insight about our journey. Do you have any questions? Two questions. 